هستم A legal case could overhaul the income tax system as we know it. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Palo Alto Networks. Palo Alto Networks delivers what's next in cybersecurity innovation to protect today's digital way of life. Learn more at paloaltonetworks.com. I'm David Brancaccio in New York. The Supreme Court today hears oral arguments that could determine the broad question of what money Congress can tax or not tax. It's a case with wide implications, including how a wealth tax might be deployed in America. Marketplace's Nova Safo explains. The challenge comes from Charles and Kathleen Moore, who paid $15,000 in tax over an investment in a foreign business in India. The Moores say they never actually received income from their investment, what tax experts call realized gains. They're asking the Supreme Court to rule that they should never have been taxed at all. It's a pretty far-fetched uh, request. Mindy Hertzfeld teaches tax law at the University of Florida. Far-fetched because there are a whole host of tax rules which impose levies on either direct income or investment gains in corporate profits. The code today doesn't operate on a strict cash-based uh, receipt of income principle, but depending on how the court rules in this case, that's what it could turn into. And that would restrict Congress's taxing authority. Ironically, business groups and conservatives supported the imposition of the tax in question. It was part of the 2017 tax reform law passed by congressional Republicans. Now many of those groups are supporting the Moors. So what changed? But no billionaire should be paying a lower tax rate than a school teacher or firefighter. President Biden has been pushing for a tax on wealth, including on unrealized gains on assets and investments. That's an idea that's faced strong opposition. The Supreme Court could now weigh in with a decisive ruling. I'm Novosafo for Marketplace. The real estate mess in China could soon come to a head. A huge property developer narrowly avoided liquidation this week when a judge in China delayed a court date until next month. Evergrande owes an enormous amount, about $300 billion, and now Moody's has just downgraded the creditworthiness of China's government debt. Marketplace's Jennifer Pack has more from Shanghai. Evergrande got as big as it did by borrowing recklessly. All Chinese property developers did. But Evergrande stood out because it spent lavishly for land, a soccer team, and an electric vehicle company. But the spending spree stopped in 2021. Not as many people were buying in smaller areas, and Chinese regulators made it a lot harder for real estate firms to borrow. China's housing market took a dive and remains weak. In the last two years, Evergrande hasn't made more money, yet it still has to complete hundreds of thousands of pre-sold condos, and it owes money to suppliers, construction workers, and lenders. The firm was working to repay offshore creditors, but the plan was dropped in September when the company said its chairman was being investigated for illegal crimes. One creditor, desperate to recover some of their losses, has taken Evergrande to court in Hong Kong to force the company's liquidation. That decision has now been delayed till January 29th, which gives Evergrande less than two months to come up with a better restructuring plan. In Shanghai, I'm Jennifer Pack for Marketplace. Watching markets, S&P futures are down four tenths percent, NASDAQ futures down six tenths percent. Unknown investors made millions of dollars setting up trades in financial markets that paid off when Hamas attacked Israel on October 7th. Two professors, one at New York University, the other at Columbia University, noticed the trading pattern, which suggests some investors might have known in advance about the planned attack. The news agency Reuters says the Israel Securities Authority is investigating this large-scale short-selling, an arrangement where investors can profit on a bet of financial instruments value will fall. In one example, the professors found more than expected short selling of Lumi, Israel's biggest bank, in the weeks before the attack made investors more than $860 million. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by UKG, an HR payroll and workforce management solution designed with people in mind to help make a fairy tale workplace a reality. UKG, our purpose is people. And by Schwab. Schwab offers investors choices like full-service wealth management, self-directed investing options, and trading on Think or Swim. More at Schwab.com. Billionaire Mark Cuban has arranged to sell a majority of the NBA's Dallas Mavericks to the family that owns the Las Vegas Sands Casino. 
The Associated Press values the deal at about $3.5 billion. Cuban will retain control of basketball operations, and he's interested in stadium and a casino in Dallas. Marketplaces, Elizabeth Troval has more. When it comes to bets and gambling, the world of professional sports has certainly changed its tune over the years, says Victor Matheson with College of the Holy Cross. So 25 years ago, sports leagues in the U.S. were terrified of gambling. Uh, they were worried about things like uh, in the NBA, referee Tim Donaghy was fixing matches. Now professional sports teams are lobbying in favor of betting. And since the Supreme Court overturned the nationwide ban, dozens of states have legalized it. One of the biggest holdouts is Texas. Brandon Ridinghouse is a political scientist with the University of Houston. Religious groups are concerned about the fate of gambling because they think that it brings an unsavory element potentially into the state. The Texas legislature, which meets every two years, has kept sports betting illegal for now, but... Gaming interests are in this for the long term. This is a massive state. There is a tremendous amount of revenue to be had here for gaming interests. In states where sports gambling is legal, Victor Matheson says roughly $1,000 of wagers are made per capita each year. It means about 30 billion potential dollars of wagers being made. It means somewhere around two or three billion dollars of revenue being generated by the sports books. And Andrew Zimbalist with Smith College says for Mark Cuban, this deal could help advance plans for a new Maverick Stadium. And the team now stands uh, a better chance of having a new arena built with the casino next door to it. In the state, Las Vegas Sands owner Miriam Adelson will join Houston Rockets owner Tillman Pertita, who also owns casinos and promotes sports betting in Texas, says Jordan Bender with Citizens JMP Securities. With Las Vegas Sands now coming into the mix and owning another sports team within Texas, you know that is a very powerful, influential group of people that are stepping into the state. There'll definitely be increased pressure to get, you know, whether it's brick and mortar casinos or sports gambling or even both into the state in the coming years. In other words, the odds of legal sports gambling in Texas may be improving. In Houston, I'm Elizabeth Troval for Marketplace. And in New York, I'm David Brancaccio. This is the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media. It is 5.